Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit, lit. It's a unique hustle. Big, big. Check it, check it, check it. It's unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing. Outstanding official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, you know, my dear. Well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. What I mean, all, I mean, all. I mean, our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Just Google us, Boss Talk Podcast 101, and we will pop up first in line, I guarantee you. But if you want to see all our visuals, you got to go over to our YouTube channel. There you can check out all our content. And let me tell you, though, we do have something called exclusive content now that you can't just see on our regular page. Don't forget to hit subscribe and notifications so you can get all the notifications. But if you want to get exclusive content, you got to go ahead and sign up for our membership. How you do so is under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section, there is a link that says join our membership today. That Click that link, follow all the instructions, and that's how you can be a p part of our family. Because y'all see us all the time on the streets and be like, man, I love what y'all doing. Keep it up. How can we support the brand? That is how you can support the brand Join our membership, and I thank you in advance, and we love you. Hey, man, listen, man, we got a special guest in here today. She don't really, hey, man, the West Coast is in the building, man, all the way from, is it Sacramento? Sacramento to the back. All the way to Texas, man. She here, man. Hustle Mom, Martina is in the building. in the house. West Coast <laughs> in the house. Hustle Mom is here, man. Man, I'm, good to have you back, man. Man, I'm so glad to be back. It's like... Nostalgic thoughts, you know? <laughs> and you know what? I stayed at the same hotel that I stayed at the last time, and I was like, you know what? God wanted me to stay here so I can enjoy it. Well, right? how, how is it this time compared to last time? We'll start like that. Well, I got a chance to enjoy <laughs> Dallas. Last time I was working so hard, and I didn't yeah. get a chance to enjoy Dallas. But, oh, my God. It's just been so wonderful. I was out in the country. Oh, that's hard. What country? Man, I don't know. I was so out deep in the farmhouse. I was at the Rooster Farmhouse. That's wow. hard. That's Rooster hard. Had me out so far, man. It was so beautiful. I've never in my life ever seen a bug, you know, with the lights on it. Mm -hmm. What are they called? A June bug? I don't know, but they are. Oh, the little small one or big light, one? light bug? Yeah, yeah. I've never seen one of those ever in my life. Well, you got a couple of kind. You know, I'm old country boy, so well, it ain't just one. I've never been camping. <laughs> I never been I've never been, that's, that's on my I'm bucket a city list. girl, you know what I'm saying? So it was just so beautiful and peaceful out there in the country and this big old pond and the, you know, little, little pier and the uh, the bonfire and it was just so peaceful. I was just wow. like. Did you buy yourself some um, country boots to go no, with it? No, I didn't, but you, I wanted some. I want the hat. I want yeah, to get you. We got to get you. We going to get cowboy out that. next time for the next exactly. time. I, come, yeah. I want my hat. I want the boots. I want me some Daisy Duke showing uh -huh. my clappers. It's going down. I want it. I want to go down. The I belt want to go buckle, down. everything. Man, I love this city. Um, Rooster, Mac Rooster showed me. Shout out to Rooster, wonderful. man. Wonderful. Shout out to Mac Rooster, my ism son. I love him to pieces. He wow. showed me such a good time. We had a wonderful time at his birthday party. It was an extravagance. So how was it, man? Like, like, give, give me the answer. So when I talk to you, you say, I'm about to come to Texas. I didn't know he was having a party, you know. But then you get here. How did it go down? Give me a little answer. I wasn't there. Oh, it was wonderful. It was like with the women and it was all the, you know, the pimps, you know, the pimps are there. You know, like at Kenny Red funeral, I was just so many pimps. Yeah. And, you know, so I'm used to that type of um, environment, environment yeah. going to the players' balls and all that. So it was just a holiday for pimping in Allen, you know? Man, yeah. you're, you're, I, last time you, you, you was on here, and then you left. Uh, we had Nina Loretta. I think she went crazy when we uh, when we mentioned you. She said, "Man, I love her, man." You should have called her and, and had her come I down here. I should have to come by, yeah. man, because she said she loved you, man. And like, I love her back. Yeah, you know? you, and, you inspire a lot of young ladies, man. That's what I want to do. That's what I'm here for. I'm the 21st century Ray app. man. I'm here to let you know it's okay. Wow, it's okay. You know, I went to the um, I went to the blade. I went to Harry Hines. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. It's still going down. Oh, man, these girls are so beautiful. 
and it was a mosh pit. They ran up on me. I was like, "Hustle mob!" Rooster took me down there, you know, and they showed me so much love. I didn't know they loved me like that in Texas. Wow, they love me. Man, loved them you. girls, they showed me so much love. This one girl was with her trick, and she busted a U turn. She was like, "Wait a minute, I gotta go back to see Hustle mob." <laughs> Already, wow. and he took her back. And she hugged me. We took a picture. Shout out to Winter 100. Man. You know what I mean? Man, it's yeah, she going said she down. she the trick for 900 after she left me. Man. I said, bitch, I sprinkled you, bitch. I sprinkled you. <laughs> the whole fairy was out on the house the one, job. The one thing about it, you know, a lot of people, you know, they hear you talk. And you you, you, you made reference to Rahab, chapter 2 of Joshua. Joshua, yes. And, but you know, from not only Rahab, but even when you look at the lady, the the woman who her daughter danced for, and John Baptist's head was cut off and put in the charger. Like the women have always arrayed and danced, and there was always this thing where you didn't get away from that lifestyle. Not even in the good book, huh? No, it's one of the oldest um, occupations in the world besides being a carpenter. Um, so you know. People want to talk all this mess about prostitution and stuff, but they want a Boaz blessing. You know, Boaz is one of the one of the richest men in the land. That's right. But the they don't room. know that Boaz mama was a three o four one time. <laughs> That's right. That's she was three o four around that bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you you know you squares want to talk about prostitution and all that. Just remember, King David's great 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 grandmother was a hoe. No, that's real. That's okay. real. Rahab is in that forty-two generations. Right. And they can't in, get away from and that. She's in the fa she's in the hall of faith. If you yeah, Google it right now, look up at the hall of faith. Who's in the hall of faith? Abraham and Sarah, but that hoe sitting up there right with him. Rahab, Rahab <laughs> sitting right up there with him because Man. she has so much faith in God. And I had so much faith in God. I know now that God had me in His majestic hands on the journey. You know what I'm saying through this ism. You know. Um, I give him all the glory. He gets all the glory. People want to ask me, you know, always ask me, like, how did you, you know, go through this? And what do you think about this? You know, just they have so many questions, you know. Do you have friends that um, are still in the game? Do you have friends that um, um, are they, um, do they still have their scruples? Do they still, they look like you? You know, I know that God touched Mike. You know hey. what I'm saying? Because... I'm, I'm hella fine. You're definitely but guess fine. What? I'm fine in the inside and out because I'm made of God. Because everything I do, I surround God in it. You know, as you should. Like I, I, people can say what they want to say. I'm a holy hoe. <laughs> you see me in this white, looking right. <laughs> hey, I'm a holy hoe. So it was a time that. I wouldn't even date a trick unless he had a wedding ring. Mm. Don't be offended, square bitches. But sometimes, you know, a hoe do got to make your life right. You get them babies and by the man, and you sucking his dick before you got married. Then you have a baby, and you be like, I don't want to do that no more because I kissed the baby. Well, bitch, I got news for you. A 304 going to give him what he want because a man needs his penis sucked. The fuck? Okay? Every single one of them. Every last man need his dick. Suck a dick, save a life. Mm. You know what I mean? A prostitute saved a square from leaving his wife. You know why? Because she sucked his dick. He didn't want no coochie because he didn't feel like he was, you know, wanted to cheat on his wife. But he needed that dick suck. But none of them <laughs> ever wanted to leave their wives for you? I don't want one of them. Trick gonna be dating behind my back. I don't want a trick. Unless he got one foot on, in the grave and one on the banana field. Did you ever think that it would be a time when, you know, like, you, of course, out of the game now, and you just pretty much is just, you're a personality where people look up to you, girls look up to you. I'm a corporate you. bitch. There you go. Don't so, get twisted. I, I went from the concrete to the carpet. Now I'm a corporate bitch. Exactly. And I take my game with me. I ain't going to never drop my books and lose my lessons. Already. I'm taking it all the way with me, but... I'm not hoeing no more. If that, you're looking, that's what, that's what, that's that I and G gone. <laughs> <laughs> but I am a child of God first. Then directly after that, I'm a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> now, directly after you? that, I don't, you know, I'm a lot of things. I'm, you know, I'm like a seven layer bean dip. You know what I'm saying? It's layers to Martina. 
But, but Martina, how, how did you? Because it's a lot of lot of of course girls that's done the business over here, but nobody's been able to express it. How did you figure out how to express it and deliver it, like on a podcast to people who you know what I mean? The girls who might still be out there, they they, they watch you. I'm telling you, you know they that because when you go places, but you they see, see that. me in them. Every all these girls see me in them. Some girls can't talk about these things because they're married now they're living a different life they transition got it, got it. but when they hear me talk they be like I went through that same thing you know but I'm here to impact their life I'm here to just talk about everything like I have this new album you guys you guys go copy yeah, right now I heard now. about that it's called Hotels Volume 1 is out Volume 2 will be out um, May 19th I'm having an album release party with Freeway Ricky. Hey, shout out Freeway. Freeway Ricky Dispensary in L.A. in uh, Sun Freeway. Valley, California. He is such a wonderful man. He has a story. And that's why me and him relate, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. You know, we relate because we've been there. We've been in the trenches. You Did know, you know him back in the days? No, I didn't know him back in the day. But, you know, like, you know, we have a kindred spirit, mm -hmm. you know. And um, a friend of mine named... Um, Grimace 400, you guys. Yeah, he's been on here. Grimace 400. Grimace is so been on here. Yeah. He's one of the most, he's like Shakespeare to me. He's one of the best <laughs> he poets. He got a song with YG. Mm -hmm. He's one of the best poets to me, you know, one of the male best poets in the world. And um, he hooked me up with Freeway Ricky. Yeah. And uh, it's just. I it's talked to Freeway Ricky a couple of nights ago. We just interviewed him again in Mississippi. We was just in Mississippi together, and um, that's a that I love the dispensary. We also flew to L.A. and I did a whole, you know, uh, just a whole behind the scenes. Uh, look at his his dispensary, and then what you I have to go through is very hard. Yeah, just you know, the stuff that he to did to try to get all that done. Alphabets to get that done. You have to walk a thin that's line. Right. You know. Um, I'm having a party there. It's called Poetry Can't Puff Puff Pass. But what date is it on? It's on the 19th, 19th of, May. of May. And it's called Poetry Puff yeah, Puff Pass. That's Sunday. This week? Yes, yeah, this that's week. As soon as you get back. Yeah, and Volume 2 is coming out. Mm -hmm. Hey, so who I'm, produced it? Who produced it? Me. But I'm going to have other producers on the other volumes. I'm going to have Volume 1 through 16. Wow. So but I did my first one, you know, because I have to do what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm a woman out here by myself. And um, like I said, I'm 58, and it ain't never too late to be great. Come on now. You know, so I just want these ladies to know that don't let yourself go. Oh, yeah. Don't let yourself go. Oh, you look you can good. still do it. Thank you. But I give God all the glory. You know, but I want to look good in the inside. You look great. You know, yeah. and the outside. You know, the exterior and the interior it has to be right. Or you won't flourish. You know what I'm saying? That's just how the universe works, you know. But back to Hustle Mom Hotels. Go download, share, like, and subscribe to my page, Hustle Mom 7 on YouTube. And I have a Zoom class. Really? I have Martina's Masterclass. It's on Zoom. It's what, what does that entail? It entails, um, it's not turning no bitches out and all that stuff. That's right. not what I'm into. I'm not do. I'm not hoeing no more, y'all. I'm retired, been retired since 2006. So what are but you talking my about? My mind ain't retired, but, you know, I just, you know, always express to these girls to use condoms and do the right things. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to be out of here, do it right. Don't do nothing strange for no change. You know, people um, applaud Amber Rose. Shout out to Amber Rose. She has a slut walk. Well, Martina has hotels. And I'm telling you bitches to stop going without condoms. Stop drinking babies. Stop being uh, uh, goat throats. You know what I'm saying? They think that shit is cute. But then you're going to have infections. You're going to wind up dying. Like you're playing Russian roulette with your body. And so that's what I'm telling bitches. You know what I'm saying? Use rubbers. Get the money. Know your worth. You know what I'm saying? Take care of yourself. Um, the class, you know, entails so many things. It's like $300 a month. A girl has access, access to me, access to me for a month for $300. You know what I'm saying? Every week I talk to them about different things, etiquette, you know, uh, vocabulary, having good grammar, you know what I'm saying? S you know, su you know, seducing a, a, a trick, you know, without having sex, you know, is six million ways to skin a cat. Choose one. 
You know, you don't have to always just give up your coochie. You can have a conversation. You can give somebody a massage. It's all kind of ways to get money. And this doesn't have to just be for a hoe because then I know some females out here, some squares, who might want to know how to finesse a man just because they don't know how to talk and to get males. What they want. And like, get what they want. You're just getting, getting just going to pound town. You right. know what I'm saying? Just getting your head busted. You know, you're not getting nothing out of it, even if you have a boyfriend. Like, make him invest in you. Like, exactly. go hold hands and kick cans. Go somewhere. Do something. Let's go to the library. Let's find out what's going on in her head. Learn what's in her mind and stop trying to fuck her from behind. Because a lot of females out here are being used by yes, a lot of these men. Yes, and it's only five minutes of funk. And you can have longevity with a female and get more out of her and have more emotion if you stop trying to fuck them and stop trying to have sex with them. And, and, and the females, too. Because all they do is use you after they finish sucking on your glizzy. They don't want you no more. Wow. They don't want you no more. They using you, too. I want to go back. Uh, you started off because you... At a young age, you was mail handling. You was dealing with mail. I was. I worked at the post office. Post office. But I had like you know summer How jobs. How was you when you did that? Um, when I worked at the post office, I was like eighteen years old, eighteen to twenty. And but, but I when I turn, I turned, I turned out. I turned out June first, nineteen eighty five, in San Francisco, and it, I, my birthday was May twenty six. Okay. And I saw I was 19. So when I turned 20, five days after I turned 20, I turned out. That's when I put my hoe into, you know, activated it on the concrete, like really, really out there, like really doing it. You know, I've heard about it. I, you know, educated myself about it by being exposed to the ism and seeing my brother's holes and all that, you know, and breaking on my teacher or breaking on this dude in the neighborhood that got money and stuff like that. But actually getting on that concrete. That shit ain't no joke. It's no joke being a hoe. This ain't no game. You cannot be emotional. You have to leave those emotions at home because there's no money there. You have to pay attention. You have to watch everything. And that's what I'm telling these girls right now on my Zoom. I went on a whole show in the city of Arizona. And I was on 27th. And I seen all these girls with their head down. Head in their phone, scrolling, scrolling, not paying attention to their peripheral. And I was flabbergasted. I'm like, if you worked at Macy's, you can only be on your phone at lunch and on your breaks. You don't got no business being on your phone on that whole straw. It's serial killers out there. There are people out there. There are gangbangers out there. It is, it is it's scary. It's dangerous. It's danger out there. Girl... You ain't got no business being on your phone unless you calling somebody to come pick up your money because you got too much. Are you talking to a trick, setting up a play? Do hoes get kidnapped? Hell yeah. That's why I'm like, you got your head down. You got your head down. This one girl has some ear pod things, some ear things. Listen to her music. I rolled the window down and said, hey, bitch, say, bitch. Bitch didn't even hear me. I said, look, if a trick could just come up behind her. Just snatch her up, throw her in a van, throw her in the trunk of a car. You know, I feel like that should be a rule that should be submitted in the new commandments of the ism. No bitches should be on their phone unless they talking to a trick, unless they talking to their wife-in-law. Bitch, I got a double date. Are you talking to your folks, telling him to come break you because you got too much money? But aren't the pimps supposed to be somewhere close by where they're watching to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing? If they a Mexican pimp. Oh, so black pimps don't do that. Girl, there we have another green moment. I know, I gotta know. <laughs> okay, so do you think gorillas pimps? It's a metaphor. Gorilla is this type of pimping. Gorilla pimping, then there's Mexican pimping, there's finesse pimping. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? But just because I'm saying it's gorilla pimping don't mean he's a gorilla pimping. No, pimpin'. I know that part. And but... when I say Mexican pimping, don't, you guys, I love Mexicans. I have a baby by one, you know. It doesn't mean like, 
you're talking about a Mexican. Mexican. Okay, that's what I was. You know sure. what I'm saying? When I'm saying Mexican pimping, it's like you watching the bitch, you breaking her for every, you know, trap she makes, first money she makes, you just breaking her, not letting her stack it up like okay. palm trees. You know, you're not letting her stack it up before you, you know, break her for it. You checking her for every little money. Like if she in the strip club, she'd get a dance for twenty dollars. You breaking her for that. You inside the strip club watching her with every dance. Are you on the host show by popping out the bushes? No, bitch, don't go with him. That's the police. No, you know, just in the bitch business. Like let the bitch home. Okay. This Man. nigga over here with a sombrero on, a goddamn burrito, and a poncho. <laughs> <laughs> he doing some serious Mexican pimping, you know and. Kenny Red was never that, you know, my first folks was never that. I stacked my money up. If it was a lot, I'll make a phone call. Come get this money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hurting my feet. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to put it in the bottom of my stock and in the bottom of my heels. So my feet start hurting. I'd be like, come get this knot. How much you, How much the most you ever had to put in your damn shoe, Martina? Oh, a thousand. It start hurting. You getting taller and taller. Yeah. <laughs> it be hard and you got to break it down and put it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it depends on if it's hundreds or if it's twenties or, you know, tens right. or fives. You know, bitch be putting that money up under their stocking. Well, in the 80s and 90s, we would wear stockings and put the money at the bottom of, you know, our foot and then yeah, put yeah. our shoe on. Because you have to shake a bitch and shake a bitch. You can't to even get, get the money. Right. You ain't going to get nothing out of a bitch when they put that money in that stocking. Wow. I and then we would cut the holes out the stocking in the, you know, middle part so we can have that easy access right. to date. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, that was that's a uh, I wanna ask you about uh you see what's going on with Diddy. Have you, I, you know what? I had my Diddy moment, but it wasn't a bad moment. But I wanted to hear your take on it because I know you see everything that's happening. I had the question, I was like, okay, you helping the did stuff. I don't know what, how far or extent that it you know, that it goes, but I do know that that there's a lot of people saying a lot of things and there's a lot of they had never arrested him yet but what do you think when you see he had wild parties what does that mean what the hell went on do you think it wasn't no piss imp and that's what it wasn't <laughs> oh, so okay, you it was just that some freak parties. shit it was freak off it was freak off that was all it was it's some big time tricking you know if you got it, what it say it ain't tricking if you got it no you was tricking <laughs> you was tricking diddy and it got, got him caught got up. Got him caught up doing too much freaky shit. You know what I'm saying? Did you ever go to any big parties where no. people, uh, they tried to get you to go there and, and hang out with them? Um, you, been, I'm I've talking about with, no, I I, not just square parties. I'm not talking about... No, it. let me tell you. I had a Diddy moment in 2000. Okay. And it was at the 112 Club in Atlanta. And I went to a... Uh, yeah, yeah. I went to a Magic Don Juan party. He yeah. had it in Atlanta. I think it was 2001 or 2000. It was one of those years. And after the Don Juan party, we went to the 112 Club. And so, you know, Don Juan and them was over there. Kenny was over there. Good game, Juju. You know, all of them. And so... Um, I was over there with my his O's. You know, me and Kenny was cool, so I had an escort service at this time. Yeah, yeah. So, but, you know, he was like, you know, it's going to be a party. We coming out there. You know, I'm going to check up on Kenny, go run up on him. Hey, Kenny, you know. So I had my, some, a couple of my little bitches with me, and um, we were standing in the 112 Club, and P. Diddy, P. Diddy came up to me, and he was like, you, you, you. VIP and I went up there and I was in the VIP kicking it. <laughs> and then the two girls that I was with, they didn't get picked. Damn. But one of them, she was real little and tiny. My little niece, Jazzy Boo. She snuck her ass up in there. She got <laughs> up in there. I was like, come on, bitch, come on. And she snuck her ass up in there. But that was a very fun P. Diddy moment for me. It was you know you crazy. nothing crazy happened. No, in I sit and had I, a good time. I stood by, I stand, I, I sit in VIP. I didn't move. I just wanted to be cute. And I sit by Carl Thomas okay. all night yeah. and just was chopping it up because I don't give a fuck about, I don't fan out. I don't be like, oh my God, all that shit. I'm a star. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I might not be no rap star. I might not be no movie star, but I'm a star of David. Already. I'm a star of David, you, yeah, know? you know? So I don't do all that. I don't be all up in people's face and doing that type of stuff. And if any bitches be around me doing that, I'm about to bust your head to the white meat show, bitch. Stop. Don't do that. Don't embarrass me like that. You said earlier that you, um, you have a baby. I know it's a baby girl by a Mexican dude, right? Was that Mexican guy a trick? No, he was my boyfriend. He was in high school. He was my sweetheart. That was early. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I never wanted to have no baby in the home. So you only have one child? I got one child, but I never wanted to have a baby when I got in the game because I feel like it was going to stop me from my home. It was going to get in the way of my home. 
You know, mm. like I was so into my pimp and so into this ism, it would have gotten between me and my ism. But how did you, you know, just, like who, how you gonna have a baby and you just then you gonna start looking at the pimp as my baby daddy and thinking you better than the other bitches and you know, it, it, I don't know, I don't know. It's just me. Well, who kept I'm the just baby so dedicated girl? to this ism to yeah, where I said. just never wanted to. You know, have a baby. You know what I'm saying? I never wanted to have a but baby. But when you at twenty, at twenty, when you became, you wanted to know where the baby was at. Yeah, yeah. Well, he wanted to know where the baby was at yeah. when I was hoeing up. Right. There you go. With the Mexicans. Oh, so the baby. So the baby, baby daddy was active in her life. You were active. Let me tell you something. He told her he you know, he he was just oh. So God. he had custody and he took care of the child. God bless my oh, baby man. daddy. He passed away. Oh, but he was yeah. the best father in the world. Man, it was like every he knew I was a hoe, but I you know he didn't like it. But he was my boyfriend in high school, and it was like I grew up, and it was like he still was a kid. Still, he was still going to the homecoming games. He was still doing this, and I'm like, we got a baby. We got a baby. We can't be doing all this stuff now. But, you know, I started being in the game. And so he would watch her and him and his new wife, you know. Wow. And so every Monday, you know, I would always send them Western Union every Monday, no matter what city I was in. You know, um, Kenny always made sure, you know, that I sent money for my daughter. Wow. Every Monday, every Monday on clockwork. They was at the Western Union. You know what I'm saying? Every Monday, I sent money to my baby's father. Well, because you were gone all the time, you weren't able to be active in her life? I was active in my daughter's life. Yeah, I was active in my daughter's life a lot. You know okay. what I'm saying? But during school, I got to go get some money. Already. Okay? You know what I'm saying? So she with her daddy, her family. Um, yeah, I I'm not having my daughter taking her all with me. You know, let her right. stay with her daddy. I don't want her exposed to somebody molesting her or she getting babysitted by one of the, you know, yeah. babysitters. Yeah. I just, I didn't get molested, you know. So did she ever say to you um, eventually as she got older, anybody ever approach her and like, oh, your mama is a hoe type of thing? And she going to be like, and your mama's a slut. And if she got a dollar <laughs> for every man she fucks, she'll be a millionaire. My daughter, I'm not worried so you about that. So you talk to her too. Game like you. Tight. They game tight. They okay. know they're not going to ever speak bad about the ism. The ism them took care of them. Like, uh -huh. it took care of me when I was younger. Okay. I had some good Christmas. I had good birthdays. I had good, good times. My brothers used to break my mama off. And that's the crazy because cause nobody... You know, it's not everybody. Uh, they don't have your story where you grew up and you understood it at I an early it. age. Right. She respected because it was something that she she grew up in. That she grew up into, and yeah. it was and it was and it and it took care of me. It's still taking care of me. You know what I'm saying? Like this is my religion. Wow. This ism is my religion. And you, my father wasn't in my life, and I looked up to my pimp brothers. Yeah. I would never bash the ism. Never. Never. Even though I left, you know. You know, being with Kenny, you know what I'm like, but I never like bashed him. How old were or you? Or bashed the ism. I never did that. You know, I never ever did that because I love the pimping. I love the ism. My brothers, I love the ground they walk on. How old were you when your brother passed away? Um, when I my brother passed away in ninety three and I was hoeing hard. How old were you? Um, probably like twenty eight. Twenty eight. How did he pass away? He uh, passed away. It was a tragic pass. It was a pa it was a tragic death. Um, oh God, I don't even want to talk about it, y'all. I don't want to start crying. Oh God, my brother Rico, he had a tragic death, but I think that's why God let him just give me so much game because he knew he was gonna be dying. Mm -hmm. You know, God know the future, and my brother gave me so much game, but my brother Re Reggie was like didn't like talk to me about this ism until I was like deep in it and I was grown. Okay. But I was young, like That's going in my brother's holes, purses, blowing up motherfucking rubbers like they was balloons, you know, asking did them he, questions. He was the one who gave you the ring, wasn't he? Yeah, he the one gave me the ring, yep, and said, don't you give your coochie away. He the one gave me like some real good game when I was younger. Do you still he, have that ring? I, no, I don't have that ring. I don't. Uh, I don't. So and you ain't gonna tell us how he passed away. Well, it was, it's crazy. It was crazy. It was, it's a movie. It's a movie how he passed is away. That coming, is, uh, do we have a book coming or something? That Will you, you tell give it us? in it? We do. I do have a movie coming. Oh, we got a movie coming and a book. And, and I have a book coming right now. Shout out to Reliano, my artist. One of my artists. I have a um, record label, you guys. That's hard, man. You know what I'm saying? You're like, doing everything. And I'm looking for young girls with, um, 
talent. I'm not looking for no men. Only only man on my label is Reliano. Okay. The son of Seagram. Have you guys heard of Seagram? No. From um, Oakland, California. I am, I am. He was a raw rapper. Yeah. yeah, yeah he was with I rap am. a lot and yeah, all that. I yeah. remember Seagram. And he had a tragic death. Yeah. And his son seen him get killed when he was nine years old. Man. This little boy seen that and he grew up to be a grown man now. And he in the music? And he's in the music industry and um but he's he's um man he's, he's he has a story you guys have to get him up here man, but um Reliano shout out to you you know and shout out to uh Golden Delanori that's who's um who I'm going I'm, I'm my publisher. Let me ask you yeah. something you might tell me you might not tell me entertainers when rap hit the scene you seen rap come into the, to play um did they ever have any rap tricks any any guys that was you know. Uh, in the music business that was, you know, coming at date? you. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, can you share an experience with us? Mm -mm, I might have snitched. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I am not Kareem well, Stephanie. I mean, but, but you, you know could, but you could write a book, right? I could write a book and tell a lot of shit, but I'm not that. So it was that deep, like you knew that yes. many. Look, at I had a producer that, you remember, I used to be dropping loads on him. Remember the one I told you I was shitting on him? Yes. He was a big time Oh, he producer. was in the, he was in the music. Was, man. I didn't know that. You didn't no, say you didn't that. Say no, he was a producer in the movie business. Oh, in the movies, okay. In the I was movies, saying the music. Yeah, no, not the music. I never had to do nothing gross to no musicians. Yeah. But, you know, none of that. But this producer, man, these white guys, they be weird like that. Yeah, yeah. But I never had to do no weird shit to a black guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But I Did barely you? dated black guys. And so you ran like, from black guys, really? Run like, what? Why, why, like, why, why is that a, why is that a thing? And, and, the, and the people in the hole, and they say, don't go to the black dude. Because they dicks is too big, first of all. <laughs> first of all, they, and then they're going to they, they try to just tear you up. <laughs> They gonna try to tear you up. They gonna try to get their money's worth, and then they might switch up on you after they finish and rob you. That's why so, they don't. That, that's so why. That's yes. a good reason. So any okay. So men of other races don't come with big dicks. <laughs> I ain't seen it. <laughs> I okay. haven't. I'm pretty sure it's some out there, but I haven't seen any. <laughs> I've been and seeing. She seen some. I seen. The only thing I've been seeing is fingers. Like <laughs> no dicks bigger than my thumb, no. my finger. Yeah. Oh, oh that's good yeah. stuff. Wow. <laughs> All my tricks looks like fingers. They dicks look like fingers. <laughs> I got. I don't even. So um, we interviewed um, Minister Seymour. Um, before and I remember when we were talking to him, he mentioned you, and he mentioned that you were married to um, Kenny Red. But I've never heard you mention that before. Since I have you on here, I like to always ask from the horse's mouth. It takes for somebody else to tell a bitch business. I need to know. <laughs> so is this Damn. true? Is my titties right? <laughs> yes, it's fine. Okay. Yes, I am married to Kenny Red. I was his hoe that he adored. I have a poem coming out about it. I'm a, it's it's going to tell you guys. It's going to run down everything. What I had on. Wow. Where we got married. What happened. Everything. I wow. have a poem. I can't wait till the book comes out. 16 and the 304 love story. Wow. And then I have one called Mutiny on the Ship. When the hoes found out that I was married to mm. Kenny Red. Oh, they got mad. His so it was a the secret. The household was in the shambles. So it was what a the? secret. <laughs> what you mean? I ran How did they find out? Because I told him, I was like, that's y'all pimp. He my husband. Oh, Lord. I got mad like three years later. And told him. And they, they believed you. They knew what, I, they know I ain't no liar. Oh, okay. So and, and and they was upset with you because they were jealous. They was upset. One bitch tried to slit her arm. Two chose. One ran off doing hair around up her motherfucking nose. So what did Kenny have to say about it when you told it? He said, "I'm gonna kill you, bitch. When I see you, bitch, it's on and popping." And I ran off to my mama house. I ran. Because <laughs> he didn't want nobody know. I was scared. Know. I, was scared. I was scared. I was scared. I was scared. Y'all don't even know. Just thinking about it, I was scared. <laughs> and he came to my mama house. My mama said, "Wait a minute." Hold up. Wait a minute right now, Kenny Red. You're not about to punch my motherfucking daughter. You're not about to put your hands on my motherfucking daughter. That's what my mama said. Hold on right now. 
And he held on. Matter of fact, this is what my mama said. Hold on, dog catcher. My mama used to always think she'd be cussing somebody out. She'd be like, sitting over there looking like the dog catcher. That's a weird cursing. I'd be like, what is a dog catcher? Was that a bad thing in the 30s? Because my mom was born in 1930. So I'm like, what is a dog catcher? Because she really, that was her curse word. Mm -hmm. So she said, listen here, dog catcher. You she, ain't about to, she told him, she said, you ain't about to put your hands on my motherfucking daughter. Wow. She was like, you came and asked me for my blessing. You came and asked me, could you marry my daughter? And I said, yeah. Oh, wow. So he did it that way. That's yes, good. he did. He did it right. He, he asked my right. mama. Mm -hmm. And me and him drove off. And then he drove off. And So the day when he passed thing. away, were you still married to him? Yes, I'm still married to him, but it's some bitch around here saying that she married to him. So I just feel like it's yeah, a Frankie, a Frankie Lyman moment. Yeah. With a real Miss Wright, please stand up. <laughs> here I go, right here. Be like, where the paperwork at? Man, it's public knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Wow. You guys go look at. I was married February 14th, Valentine's 1994. Day. Wow. Did you have to make arrangements and stuff for him for his funeral and stuff? Um, everything was taken care of. Everything. I mean, like, his family is so wonderful. His daughter, Nikki, that's married to Be Legit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And his daughter, Ivory. Those are some wonderful children. Wow. I'm talking about Kenny Red got some beautiful daughters. Those were my babies. Like, Nikki, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I helped her get ready for her prom. You know, I paid for a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? School clothes, all that. Kenny Red kids love me. Children love me. Wow. Love me. You said be legit. <clears throat> be legit is that's that's E forty. Be legit. Them some bad boys. Yeah, they some bad boys. The click, man. The click, you know, man. E forty. You know, I got in an argument with TMZ. Oh. You know, they kicked me off TMZ about E forty, man. What did they say about you, E forty? I got in an argument because they was like talking about that. Um, Jay Z was the best rapper and Lil Wayne, and so they thought I was gonna go along with they stuff, and I was like. <laughs> E-40, the best rapper. Come on you now. Heard his Come on catalog, now. Harvey. And Charles was like, yeah, Harvey. And then so, yeah, it was like, it was funny. That's but, hard, though. I but like you know it. you what? They ain't called me to come back on there no more because I'm, guess because I was like talking crap to Harvey. <laughs> I was like, let's argue. E-40 is the best. Don't nobody got his swag. Nobody got his style. Can nobody rap like E-40? No, nah, nobody. You know, rap. E-40 yeah, is... Yeah, like nobody is, else. Man, we love E-40 in the Bay Area. And Too Short. I grew up on Too Short. Man. Before E-40 came, it was Too Short. Have you ever met Too Short? Of course I've met. I know Give me Todd. a story. Give me a story about Too Short. Too Short. Let me tell you. Back in the day when I was with my first folks... Too Short used to be at Eastmont Mall and he used to sell cassettes of his music. So you seen him coming out the trunk with them what cassettes. You mean? I didn't went and bought a <laughs> CD before I went to the whole show because I got to have something to listen to while I'm going across the Bay Bridge. You know what I'm saying? Get my home and juice stuff. Already? Because I'm about to stay out till noon. Come on listening now. Listening to motherfucking Too Short tunes. Which one was it? It wasn't cuss words, was it? All of them. All of them. What you mean? I knew. I used to be a rapping hoe. I used to be on the whole show making up Life raps and shit. Life feels too short. Catching tricks. Tricks, doing a Roger Rabbit and shit, dancing, stopping tricks. I used to be doing anything to get a trick, you know, and that's how Kenny Red like heard of me. Like his hoes used to be like, it's this bitch on the whole show named Tiffany. She got blonde hair. This bitch be rapping. She know how to do the Roger Rabbit. <laughs> da, 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 da. You know, because I used to be getting money but having fun doing it, yeah, you know, being yeah. a happy hooker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Come here, trick. Da, 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 da. Make a rhyme and then he stop. You know, I'd be activating tricks, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know how to stop a trick and make him want to date, even if he don't want to date. Man, you something else, man. So, too short, E-40, you right. E-40 was a little bit after for me as well. Yeah, he was after. He was after, after too, too short. short. For me. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember that during that time. That was, that was yeah, good times, time. man. And did then, you ever get to meet Tupac? I never did, but I seen it because I'm not no type of bitch to run up yeah, on people yeah, fanning yeah, out. Yeah. But I, I remember in 1996, I went to the fight. That was right before he passed. And, um, yeah. I, I was um I had just bought me a brand new uh 300 GS hey. uh, uh 300 GS Lexus, and I was I was I was I was jamming his song. And I was with this one bitch, and she was about to fan out. I was like, bitch, you better not fan out. <laughs> I was like, because you ain't going to get back in my car. If you run up on him and ask him for an autograph or a picture, bitch, 
Don't it's get back done. in my car. It's none. I don't play them kind of games. So we seen him, and I was like, "What's up, Pac?" You know, I had a Tupac moment. You know, and he was like, and I was, and he was, and he was just going like this because I was jamming his song hella loud. You know, yeah, yeah. And I was jamming his checkout time. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. we gotta go. Yeah, we, we gotta, gotta go. go. And, yeah. I, and he was just like, you know. But yeah, I'm not no type of female like to run up and fan out and, and you know, like when me and Sweetie, you know, me and Sweetie, we work yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Sweetie. Sweetie. Shout out to my girl. Shout out to the Icy Baby. Let Man. me tell you something. That girl is so down to earth. Yeah. Let me tell you, she sent for me. Picked me up in a Rolls Royce truck, bought me a big old thousand dollar bouquet of flowers, and I told her I wanted some weed. She bought me like seven bottles of weed, <laughs> and then we got in the studio. We did our thing, and then after that, we went to go eat. TMZ was outside. All these different people was outside this expensive restaurant we went to. Damn. We went through the kitchen like mob wives. <laughs> we went through the kitchen. We was eating pasta. Prawns, drinking five thousand dollar bottles of oh, red wine. Come on, you know what I'm saying? Treaty, sweetie, treated me like a queen. Man, sweetie, man. treated me like a queen. The red carpet came out for hustle, mom. When I got up to that big old mansion. Let me tell you something. She opened up the door. She was like, hustle mom here, y'all. And it was just like a celebration. She had a silver platter with hella shots of Hennessy. And she opened up the door for me. She said, it's shot a clock, why, bitch. The, why did she call you to do some music? Do yeah, to do some music with, with her. her. Yes, because I wrote a poem about her called Dream Ho. Okay, break that, that down. That poem about, about her. It's going to be on volume two okay. of Hotels. Okay. And so it's just, you know, me. How did she find out you had wrote the song? She heard because it? Because I, I was on a, I was on Little Blood in okay. Oakland, Third World TV. Shout okay. out okay. to Little Blood. You know, I was on there and um, I was reciting the poem. Yeah. And she heard it, you know. Man. And then she sent her manager to come for me, right? I thought it was a ruse. You know how people trick you on... Um, um, and DMs and stuff like that. So I like to do my, I do my own social media stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, some people don't like to look in that request one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They only look at the primary general and they don't really look at the request. And I'll go into my request because I like to, you know. See, it could be something in there. But I like to like stay, you know, connected with my supporters, not Correct. fans. Correct. Because they're not fans, Correct. they're supporters and they're not my followers. Cause I don't, and when they tell me that, you're going like, I follow you. No, bitch, you a leader, ho. That's real. You know what I'm saying? Bitch, you a leader, bitch. You support me. That's real. Don't be no follower. Be a leader. You, you know, so I'm right. telling them right, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's I cool. have a lot of. Uh, it's crazy how she picked that, though. No, no, For no. her to hear that and, and know. But I you know what that. she told me? She said that whenever she's feeling down and out, she always go look at my um, interview, interview. on my soft white underbelly. My Let's soft white underbelly, better. yeah. That's what Sweetie said. So she knew me from that. Her aunties, you know, they all didn't see me on there. That's you know, right. and I love Sweetie. I want her to play me. And I love Stunner Girl also. Okay, you know? okay. But um, I love all my girls. You know what I'm saying? They come from California, Sacramento, California. I love all of them. Stunner Girl doing her big one. Mm -hmm. You know, she was on Baddies, you know. And Sweetie is international. Like, she's doing stuff like in Japan and over in India. She got... All kind of just, she's just amazing. I wow. just and she's not stuck up and she's not. She don't think she's better than. How anybody. long did you stay down there with her? I stayed out there for um, twenty about thirty hours. Wow, it was an overnight trip, and you know, turn and burn, turn and burn. Yeah, but she was mad. She didn't want me to leave. <laughs> but we was in the studio. We had a good old time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we made some good music. We got music coming out, and um, I was on her um, her song Immortal. Okay. And did you guys hear my voice when it says, it's in me, not on me. I'm married to the game. Hey. Yes, I love Sweetie for putting me on her um, her freestyle. Her freestyle. You know, um, yeah, she's, she's, she's a real one. So uh, the question I have for you right now, okay, you've been retired since when? 2006. And um, have you never won, since you retired, have you ever wanted to like settle down and get married and all of that? I'm married to the game. <laughs> I'm but married you're retired. To the game. I'm, Mitch Her I'm married to the game. Kenny Red was the game. You, I, you I'm said something about I know, but you he said he's, 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 somebody was trying to choose you or trying to get you, and and, and basically, or, or, or you was somebody was trying to 
holler at you and you say they going against Kenny Red Ghost or something. Man. No, let me tell what you. What did you say? You told me something. No, I was laughing so hard. No, I'm like, I I'm like, I'm like right. girl, no, this else. is what you know. I, one day God is going to find somebody for me. I'm so do you? Be, so you want to get? I do you want do? somebody, but I want somebody that's been in the game that transitioned. Okay. I don't want no square bear okay. from Delaware. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I don't want somebody who understands me. Yeah. You know, Got it. Um, they have to be from the game. They have to be. That's the only way, you know? Yeah. But it's flattering to me when a young guy or young pimp try to get at me, <laughs> but it's the way that you do it. You know what I'm saying? We got to separate pimping from sex trafficking. Don't talk to me like a sex trafficker. You know what I'm saying? Talk to me with some finesse. Talk to me like a man, a gentleman of leisure. Talk to me like a renaissance man. How did he approach you? Just going crazy like, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, it was like, it was like, it was like, um, it was scary. It was bullyish. You know what I'm saying? Like, who want to be with somebody like that? Like, that's not attractive. You know, that was, it was no integrity. It was no finesse about it, you know? And, and um, it's, it's, it was just not cool. You know? I, I can but tell the way she said it. If I, but let me tell you what it is. It's like, no, like, like, you like, you know, some guys, like, like a bar. do something different with me. Like, I've been from the concrete to the carpet. Now I'm in a corporate world. Okay, get me in a meeting with 50 Cent. If you could do that, then yeah, I'll be talk. with you. You know what I'm saying? You'd you be some good management. But, oh my God. So I just opinion. can't do that. Like all that yelling and screaming and all that pimp rhetoric. Don't nobody want to hear that. Don't nobody want to hear that type of shit. You are in competition with a ghost. Kenny Red pimped on me a cold chili blood. Let's do something different. Do something different. You, nobody can never compare to Kenny. You can't. Them those them some big shoes to walk in. You know. You can't do it. You are in competition with a ghost. Kenny Red is in pimp paradise. And did you mention to me the other day that when you were on Harry Hines, you know, um, with those girls, you know, visiting, that you had a trick try to pick you up? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> what can I say? You know, a bitch stay breaking luck. <laughs> Man, that's crazy, man. Like, like, tell me what, what, what do, what can we expect to see? Like, with this year, you go. When is the movie gonna come out? Everything is coming out. Twenty twenty four is my year. Oh, it's coming out this it's year. Com it's coming out this year, and um, you guys are gonna expect to see a lot of things out of me. I just want all these girls to know it's never too late to be great. Don't let yourself go. When they see me still doing shit, you know what I'm saying. I'm in the studio with Saweetie. Yeah, that's you know big. what I'm saying. That's big. I'm, I'm doing things with PGO. Wow. You know what I mean. I'm doing things with P Lanta. I'm doing things with Farmhouse Rooster. I'm doing things. That's with, hard. We are a community. This is the ism community. We cannot be tearing each other down. We have to lift each other up because we all we got. Like I said, this is our religion. This is my religion. I'm a devout 304. Why did why do Vegas seem to get all the like hype about about, you know, pimping and hoeing? Why is Vegas all? What you mean it gets the hype? Because it's more, it's a lot of money. A lot there. of lights there. People come there. Yeah, it's, it's, with a money. it's a lot of money. They of come tourists. there with money. Ain't nobody coming to Vegas broke. Everybody coming to Vegas with money. Like bitches is getting money in Vegas. They might not leave with the money, but they coming with it. They come. No, they. Yeah, they, they ain't. They ain't leaving with it. Oh, them tricks ain't leaving with that money. Uh, what, what's the old? What's the oldest um, active hoe you know of? It's a lot of hoes that's active, but they just keep, the you know. The oldest one. Game is played smooth out of sight, man. You know what I'm saying? Game is played smooth out of sight, man. Everybody business is nobody business. There's a lot of old bitches around here breaking on Mr. Jenkins. You know what I'm saying? They getting that money. You get to it. I'm, no, I'm, I'm so curious because I'll be like, okay, is there an age limit to hoeing? No, because if somebody come and try to give it to me, I'm taking it. <laughs> I'm taking it, and I'm just a real hoe, even though I'm I'm not active or anything in it. But I'm always gonna have rubbers in my purse. You know what I'm saying? It's just I'm always gonna have a mace with the uh, hair tie in my purse. You know, um, I'm gonna always have hallways. 
Uh, could I ask you something yeah. like, like when somebody, like, if, have you ever seen an incident where somebody was too young and you told them they couldn't be out there? I was like, you need to stop. You know what I'm saying? Do when that. It, when it, right. I was 20 years old when I turned out. You know what I'm saying? I was educated, graduated, all the stuff, you know? No, I, 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 I'm not feeling young. those young Have girls. you ever sent somebody in? What, I did. To you? I did. I did. I told you once um, when I was with my first folks, uh, it was a bitch that was 17. Okay. But she had an ID that said she was 22. You know, white girls, they look the same. And she had her sister's ID. Just how they think we look the same. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you know how you see a white girl, they right. be their sister, and they look they look just the same. Same freckles, everything. So she had an ID that said she was 22. So we had got, we was working at daytime on university in Berkeley. Working the whole show to day work. Daytime shift. And we went to jail. And so we went to jail and we were sitting in the cell because they only was just going to hold us for a few hours. This bitch started crying. And I was like, what's wrong with you? She was like, I'm missing my graduation. Yeah. If I tell you <laughs> my booty cheeks clenched up, my heart fell to my coochie. What? I'm looking around like, bitch, shut up. Shh. They're going to let us out in a couple of hours, right? So when we got out of jail, me and the bitch broke luck for $200 a piece. I gave that bitch my money, and I let her keep her money, and I took that bitch to the Greyhound. <laughs> I took that bitch to the Great the great Dane and said, get on this bus and go home and don't come back. Sent that bitch with a one-way ticket back to Reno. Wow. And I went home. He was like, where the bitch? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I was saving the pimping. I didn't even want him to know he had a 17-year-old yeah, bitch. Yeah, you saved But he never him. touched her or none of that shit. She only had been with us a week, you know. And real pimping don't fuck with a bitch the first week they get her. They be like, bitch, gotta give me some money after 30 days. And, it and go to the clinic days. and go through a plethora of different things before he has sex with her. That's real. So you I know, the real ones, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I was taken up for the pimping. Right to this day, he didn't know. Well, well, you know now, you're a spirit, you know now. But I was taken up for the pimping. I was saving the pimping. <laughs> That's real. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want him to even know that he even had a 17 year old. I didn't want him to even have that spirit on him that, damn, I had a 17 year old in my household. So you got to be so, over age, you over yes, 18. Yes, you, you got to be over age, you know, 18 or over, you know. Okay. But really, I don't even really like fucking with bitches that's 18 around me, you know. You got to be 22. Because even 21, 21 backwards is 12. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, bitch, go on, get another year in, bitch. Be my favorite gun, 22. See, you was too fly for a lot of them, them cats out there. They can't deal with you, man. You know, my favorite gun is a twenty two. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that thing will kill you. No, because you can put it in your bra. You can put it in your panties. You can hide oh, it. Oh, it'll shoot something, though. Yeah, but it, it won't That bullet kill. travels through yeah, you. Yeah, but it's little, and it's like, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? If you shoot somebody, they could die. Up close. <laughs> Up close, up close, back far away. It's just gonna injure them. Let you know that you ain't nothing to play with. Like, that bitch ain't nothing to play with. That's a warning. <laughs> That's a warning shot, man. You know. <laughs> But yeah, man, we love you. Man, I love you guys too. <laughs> you I changed else, my whole man. life to come. I was supposed to get on a plane and get yeah, back to California. Yeah, you told me yesterday. You like I'm gonna but stay. I was like, no, I gotta I'm go by to Boss Talk. I gotta go to Boss Talk. I said I'm gonna leave tomorrow. <laughs> I gotta go to Boss Talk and see Miss Jamaica. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I just love you. You just had a green moment this time. You also. know, I always have a green moment every single time. <laughs> but I'm glad you're learning. You know, you're I'm learning, learning from me. And you know, it's some square ladies that take my um. Uh, Martina Masterclass, mm -hmm. and they have learned so much from me, you know, like just thanking me, like, I didn't know this, you know, I'm just giving them uncommon knowledge. You need to get that book, man. You, know you need what? that book. I know, I that, that book is coming, everything is coming this year, 2024. Man, we need that book. Everybody, everything is coming, you, you know. Pardon me. No, sorry. I heard you mention in an in interview that, okay, what are all of the things a woman should do to her cat? Cause you say you spend how much money just maintenance on the, your oh, Brazilian wax? I, I, well, I go to European wax. Shout out okay. to European wax, and I get a Brazilian wax, and it costs seventy dollars each time. So if you buy a pass, you get extra, you know, um, you know, um, Brazilian wax. It's mm -hmm. like you may pay for um, six, but you'll get three extra ones. You do know? you do those yoni steams and all of that to steam it out? I do. No, I don't do that. Y'all only steam this shit. 
hell to the no. I don't play with my coochie like that. So what all do you just, that's all no, you do? I just, just get the Brazilian it. wax and just, you know, keep it clean. I don't be putting oh, okay. all that stuff in it. But I do have a designer coochie. Oh, okay. You know, because they did um, go inside my coochie and... Um, um, Reconstructed? Did they, you do they, that? They, 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 they took my walls and uh, sucked right. them in and made and dilated my coochie six centimeters. Mm. Yeah. And I couldn't even put my pinky finger in my coochie yeah. after they finished. A lot of yeah. what I saw that but on it, a, but um, it, it show only one time. Of an, um, they had one object. It wasn't like no no spices and stuff. All they Did used it hurt? Was, no, it just was like. It was kind of feeling good. I turned my head. I kind of felt embarrassed. <laughs> I think I had a nut, lady. I was about to ask that you had orgasm. I think she touched my G-spot because I was like, what was that funny feeling? <laughs> but, yeah, she they put it off. They, they put they had right. an ultrasound so they could see inside of your womb. And they go all the way around your womb and they suck it with this instrument that they use. Yeah. And it's just this funny feeling for like a whole hour. They just go around rotating in the walls of your vagina. Mm. And, and, and yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I saw on so, no, But not like, you know. Not right. cutting no skin or right. like, you know, none of that. So you said it's sucking it in. So it's just sucking the it. walls in. So they dilated me. They made me go in. Not dilate, but they made my vagina mm. shrink to six more inches. Like, There's this thing yeah. that wow. I grew up. You know how a woman pussy dilate to 10 inches? Centimeters, 10 mm -hmm. centimeters, excuse me, you guys, right. when she's having a baby. So your coochie may be a little, get a little bigger. Mm -hmm. So this procedure makes your coochie smaller. Wow. So if you have a shrimp dick man, he gonna feel like he the shit. He gonna be like, oh yeah, he gonna be feeling all them walls. <laughs> I remember yeah. growing up, there was this, um, I used to hear them talk, this is back in Jamaica, right? They used to have this soap called alum, alum soap. And all the girls, that, uh, girls who had big vaginas would use it and use that soap all the time and it shrinks it. It shrinks the coochie. It, yeah, and so you didn't have to do like surgery or anyth anything right, like that, yeah. but they used that type of soap and they said they that's what it does. They had different, you know, rituals and different remedies that they would do right. to shrink the coochie. So I just got mine's just... It was it was it was a uh, it was a promotional thing, you know, and they wanted just to do it for free because I'm hustle mom, you know. So that's why I did it, but it cost a thousand dollars. But <laughs> some females get um, reconstructions because I they'll heard get their lips cut off yes, and all that. And I don't to need make that. it cute. Right? No, I got a bird coochie. Mm -hmm. My coochie like a taco. <laughs> I ain't got that big old roast beef sandwich shit going on. You know what I mean? But. <laughs> I did it for a promotional thing. They just wanted to do it. And I was like, that's interesting. But I asked him, what did it consist of? Because if it consists of spices and all that type of stuff, I don't want that. Yeah. They were like, it's just this one that's instrument. That's that Yoni steam have those spices. Right, I don't stuff. do all that spice stuff. My coochie smell like honey. Have you, um, and, and is that one of the, have anybody else ever came at you with trying to promote something that you either turn down or you accept it? I turn down a lot of stuff. You know you what, see what I'm saying? Because I turn down a lot of stuff name. because it's not, I'm not, rep, I, it you don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. I don't represent it. I don't just go for anything like right. that. I get, I get, I get pro proposed to all the time. I get a lot of proposals. My DMs are full. My DMs are full with girls with questions and I'll be like, uh, -uh you got to join my Zoom class. You got to go through the procedure to see how old you are. It's a whole procedure to even join my master Zoom class, you know. Wow. Did you ever meet Snoop Dogg? I never met Snoop Dogg. What? Uh, I've been in the he building with right him, here. but I'm the type that don't. You don't do all right, that running up. 50 Cent, I want to meet him so bad. You like, like 50? I love 50 so you Cent. You know why? Right why? Because he, he's, he, he's got street cred. He's, he's been you in the game. You into thugs. No. He's been in the game. Like, if you, like, the ism consists of the game. The game, mm -hmm. if you're a dope boy, if you're a scammer, if you're a con artist, if you're a stripper, if you're a prostitute, a procure, um, a booster. You know what I'm saying? Like, just all the things that's in the game, you know? If you got to be in the game for me to fuck with you like that. That's all. So if you saw 50 Cent, you wouldn't walk up to him? Um, I wouldn't want to get embarrassed, you know? But... If we made eye contact, I would say something to him. And if he gave me the opportunity to have a conversation with him, I would tell him everything I've been wanting to say to him. But I'm not the type to run up to people and be like, oh, my God, da, 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 da. I just don't do it. I, I, you know, fear of getting rejected is hurtful. It's a real thing. It's it? a real thing. And I don't like that. I don't want to get feel like that. So 
Plus, I always say it like this. It, it, I'm a fan of, uh, 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 of certain people. I don't want to mess that fandom up, to be honest with you. So right. I'd rather not even, I, I'd rather believe in you as I thought I, you yeah, was and then instead you of messing mean, it up. Right, and then you be mean to but, me. That's my thing, too. <laughs> but you know what? With me, I'm so approachable. Anybody can walk up to me, and I'm going to give them a hug and my love on them because that's me. That's love. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm an image of God. Come on now. I'm an image of God, and you know, and, and it's just, I'm, I'm full of love. But you I'm know what so I think about? I just thought about this earlier today, honest to God. And I, like, I'm just a person, like if I see a celebrity, I don't, just like you say, I won't run up to them or do anything like that because I respect your space. Your space and I'm you scared understand? of rejection also. But it's not the rejection part. I'm just, I'm <laughs> respecting your space because I know how many people do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But looking back, I've seen where I've done that and the opportunity of me meeting them again don't arise. Shout so, out to Brian McKnight. Example that. And, <laughs> right. And I could have. We love him. Right. I could have. I could have went up months, to him. It's been six eight days, 12 hours since you. That nigga. I could have went up to them. <laughs> you know his song. I know you be singing it to her at yeah, night time. Yeah, of course. That's, that's my wife. Yeah. So I, I know that's went, right. I could have went up to them and made an impression respectfully and had a discussion and you never know what could have happened after that. Right. You know what I mean? So I, in my mind, for me personally, I'm, I'm not going to let that opportunity ever pass again. If they say no, they say no, and I'll keep it pushing. You're willing to deal with the rejection. I, I'm willing to deal with the rejection because you never know. Right. Being nice or being respectful or whatever, I'm not gonna come to you and be like, oh, wow, well, well. right. No, I'm gonna come to you and be like, hey, I'm such and such, you know, da da da, right. and 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 do my spill, and that's it. Well, you know, you a bigger woman than me because I ain't doing it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just scared of rejection. I don't mm -hmm. want nobody telling me, nah, -uh. you know, push me to the side. But like, you make opportunities pass because of it. Mm, well, maybe you're right, but I'm just, you know, an in pocket hoe. <laughs> That's crazy. So you guys make sure you guys go out and cop hotels. I had to get him in here, man. My boy, Rollo 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 the pimp. Change, change. Oh my God, hey, hey. Rollo the pimp is in here, you guys. Man, hey oh, Rollo, change, man. Change. My mic on, my mic yeah, on. Yeah, your mic on. I, uh, yeah, I she for to change the camera around a little bit. Just give her a second. She said, don't start talking yet. Just hold what you got. Okay. Old Rallo the Pimp just pulled up on us, man. You see that shirt? Yeah, I wanted to really, really bring Rallo because sitting in this very room is where we first uh, was approaching the situation of, of understand. How can we get somebody? what I say? How can we? I'm sorry. I say, I say, how can we get somebody that, you know, I want to get, we, we got the pimp, we need somebody to hold, somebody to know about the whole game. Right, right, and, right. And he right, said, right. I got the perfect person for you, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I say, who is it, man? He said, well, I'm a caller, man. He called you that night, too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And we talked, and I, yeah. I just, I, I had to bring this moment back together. Yeah. We, I ended up meeting her in New Jersey. Okay. At IC House. house. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was before. Yeah. That was before. No, you the one. No, no, that was after. That you the one. That's what she said. Down. You the one turned me on. Yeah. yeah. And when she said, and you put it in the universe. When she sat down, I looked at her. Then I yeah, say, man, I say, nah. I talked to him. I said, you the one that. I figured it out just like that. I knew that's who he was talking about, man. So I wanted to just chop it up with y'all for a minute, man. How did y'all even know each other? I mean, you know, you know, it's the game. You know what I'm saying? The gang gonna bring us together like that. You know yes. what I'm saying? That's hard. That's hard, you know man. Saying? I just I've been always been a um You always a been supporter a, a supporter. Of, look at I'm his best cheerleader. <laughs> I love me some PG. I always say that. I love yeah. Rollo the Pimp and Mr. Silky Slim. Wow. Shout I, out my guy Silky, man. Yeah, shout out to Mr. Silky Slim. Man, I, I had, you know, when I, when I first, when you called and we was like, we're going to get together, I knew I was going to get Rollo in here because me and Rollo partner, he passed away. I always used to link with Rollo. So mm -hmm. I'm like, man, we got to run us one back. Since Martina coming to town, we got to go and get us another one in. Yeah. Yes. And that's how this yeah. comes. You this made my energy. Break here. I'm like, I got to get him over there. This is so good. This is like, this is historical. Always. Let me tell you something. Two legends sitting right here. I already know. You know what I'm I already know. Rollo the pimp, man. <laughs> I mean, goodness gracious. I said I'm not no fanner, but I do be fanning out about the ism. You know what about I'm saying? About the ism only, right? About the ism only. I fans out about the ism. Like, Love that's it. who I fan out about. 
You know, yeah. it's crazy because you you come up in the game and it's really like a family oriented thing when it you is. look at it. it is. Like yeah, it is. you can tell it's a that it's, you could tell mm -hmm. even from back when uh, I was seeing like. Uh, all of them, done one and all of them. It always was a joint, you know, venture. To yeah. be honest with you, people that was hanging together, a family, a lot of time you and see that the unity same ones all over the country. The yes. unity, that unity is powerful. You know that, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's why they get mad too. That's why conspiracy is a thing because yeah. they don't want us to join forces, man. Right. Right, right. Even though they do. I just put yeah. it like that. <laughs> Even though they, they, do. they want to control it. Yeah. They want to control us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we all we got. It's we like, all we got. I just wish that everybody in our ISM community stop hating on one another. Stop hating on one another. Like, if you see the next gentleman of leisure doing something great, man, stand up. You know, it should motivate you. You know what I'm saying? You should congratulate that one. It's because right. you know what? If you being blessed, you know God is in the area. Mm. Come on now. You up next. Come on now. But if you over here hating on Rollo the pimp, <laughs> your pimping gonna be stinking forever. Man. You ain't gonna never be blessed by the whole fear of the game, God. Man. You well, can't I, do I, it. I that's just, how the that's how the universe works. I just appreciate both of y'all and, and and be honest with you. I just like I said, with that moment happening like it did, then me meeting her in New Jersey, then she coming back down here and now we back together again. It's just a family oriented thing and yeah, we talk, it's you know. To happen, you know? Yes. It it's oh supposed to happen. Yeah, yeah. I've been so happy. Your city yeah. It's so wonderful. Yeah, I've been so happy. You like Rollo. the South in between y'all. Oh right? my God, I love the South. I have never been out to the country, and oh, it's just that so country. Wonderful hey, that here. country is different. Yeah, it's different. It's so wonderful. It's quiet in the morning. You can just hear you barely hear. The hear you can hear the birds chirping, but that's about it. I, you know, I, I like it. You know, I, I kind of you know living here all my life. You know, I kind of can dig the country, but I wouldn't want to live there. You know, I can take it for a couple of days. I, me and too. I'll be ready to I'm go. from there, so so it's a lot of stuff when it come down to me knowing what you can do to have a good time. You right, know what I mean? Right, right, right. And, but you can't do it without a car. You got yeah, you to have a heart, and it got to be the flyest ride right. ever. So when I come through, it's like a a, a whole parade. It's, right. It got yeah, to come. Right. You got to be right, and that's yeah. how you do the country. Yeah. You yeah. got to when you show up. It' supposed to be. It' supposed to be something else. It's different. When I, I go love next. In the country. What did you say? No, I said I got a lot of love in the country. I want to get on a horse. <laughs> you ride a horse. I want to ride a horse. I want me some cowboy boots. I want a hat like and the Beyonce. Buckle. You got to have the buckle. Oh, the I want a hat like Beyonce. I want the boots. I want some Daisy Dukes shorts up my ass. <laughs> and I want to get on a horse and I want to ride. <laughs> okay. I do. I got on a pony when I was little. That was yeah. it, you know. Yeah. But I want to get on a horse. I just want to. I want to feel. And I want to shoot a gun. Crazy. I want to shoot a gun out there. I want to shoot a gun. I want to shoot some cans. I want to do all of. I want to just. Oh, really? it, was, it, was just it wasn't enough time. Wow. It wasn't enough time. I just want to just. Really, when you coming back? I'm coming back. After Father's Day. You gonna come back through and see us again? Because I'm gonna be in Vegas for Father's Day weekend. What, what, I got oh, some what? shit coming up too. She don't know. She probably be back for then. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I got some things working. That's whatever, all right. Whatever Rollo say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for whatever coming Rallo on the show, say. Martina. Man. How can people get a hold to you? We love you. All platforms. is Hustle Mom Martina. Go find me. And go <laughs> look up Hotels. Download. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple Music. And it's on YouTube. Hotels, volume one through 16. Man, hey man, make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you check. <laughs> hey man, the next clip of Martina's coming up, man. Make sure you guys check this next clip out, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.